I would like to call to order the, thank you for turning on my microphone, um, the uh, regular meeting of the Arts, Culture, and Historic Preservation Commission, December 16th, 2019. Uh, roll call. Vice well, Chair, oh, yes? Sorry, we'll actually start with Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, thank you. Call. You're welcome. Um, Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Schatzel, Commissioner Schatzel, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I'd be happy to. Thank you. Salute, pledge. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, oh, Commissioner Schatzel. Got Absolutely. <laughs> Now may we roll call. Thank you. Chair Jordan. Present. Vice Chair McMichael. Here. Commissioner Domke. Present. Commissioner Garcia. Present. Here. Commissioner Schatzel. Here. Commissioner Voices. Here. Alternate Commissioner Olson. Thank you, we have a quorum. Thank you. Presentation by the public on matters not on the agenda within the jurisdiction of the commission. The commission is prohibited by law from discussing issues not on the agenda brought to them at this time. Uh, seeing none, shall we move forward? We have none today. Thank you so much. Uh, 1B, Commissioner Communications. Commissioners, anything to report? It can wait, it can wait. It can wait? Nothing else? Thank you. Consent agenda, consideration of approval of the minutes for the September 30th, 2019 regular meeting. So moved. Uh, moved by Commissioner Schatzel. Second. And seconded by Commissioner Clower. We have a vote to accept the minutes. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Regular agenda. Consideration of Resolution 19-1, setting the time and date for the 2020, 2020, that's the future, isn't it? I'm just <laughs> checking. We were promised jetpacks. Um, the 2020 regular meetings of the Arts, Culture, and Historic Preservation Commission. So, commissioners, um, before you, you have two options for the 2020 uh, commission schedule. Um, in option one, uh, it sets a schedule of the last Monday of every other even-numbered month, with the exception of December, um, where the meeting was moved to the third Monday of the month due to the holiday schedule. This increases the total number of commission meetings per year to better accommodate projects and program needs. We saw that we had a lot of extra special meetings this year. Um, the other option would be option number two, which would adhere to the current commission schedule, uh, meeting the last Monday of every third month, with the exception of December, where the meeting was moved to the third Monday of the month due to the holiday schedule. So it's essentially six or four. Um, we've heard from the commission before that there was a preference that we go ahead and meet every other month, and so we're looking for guidance and for a schedule to be adopted. Thank you. Any comments or questions? How many meetings did we go to this year, including the specials? Up approximately. Six, I believe. Five or six. Katie's counting. I believe. Five? Five or six. I'd have to look. This might be six. Five or six. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think this is meeting number six for the year. It seems like such a good idea to increase the... Um, hmm? I think option one. Say what? Well, I'm nodding in agreement. Yeah. yeah. Continue. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened. 
I can wait. No. Sorry. Permission to speak? Yes, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Please. Um, Resolution 19-1 with a suggestion of increased um, meetings could allow us to, you know, we have a broad charge and, and very few meetings to accomplish that. And so in areas like the historic preservation, you know, working with the historical society and as um, we rapidly and effectively grow in the north part of town and what is the most historic part of our community, um, this might be a well-served time to increase our meetings so that we can pay closer attention to what's happening in that neighborhood. Thank you. With consideration of the increased uh, uh, programs and uh, uh, build-ins that we have in arts and historic preservation, I would move that uh, the commission accept option number one Increasing the meetings to six per year in uh, even numbered months. I second that motion. So moved by uh, Commissioner McMichael, seconded by Commissioner Domke. Any other comments? Are you ready for a vote? And do you need a roll call vote for this or no? No need for a roll call vote. No. Okay. Thank all you. In, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Thank you. Motion carries. I'd like to thank you for putting that on the agenda. I think this will help us with our participation, supporting what's going on with the other commissions as well, especially parks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Director's report. There we go. Okay. I'm Erin Rivas, the business manager, and I'm here to give my portion of the director's report. Thank um, you. So on the Prop 68 grant applications, um, on November 6th, we hosted visits with state parks uh, representatives for the, the three applications that we submitted for West Acre, uh, for the Fallbrook site, and for uh, the Bridge District Plaza. Um, they should let us know it probably in uh, January. First of the year, uh, which projects have been selected. I don't know if you're familiar with those projects, but the, the plaza um, is pretty cool. It's got some uh, a really, really you know, you know beautiful art feature, interactive water feature. Um, the other two are, are you know joint use properties with the school district, and um, it has, they they all have uh, art elements. Um, the um, yeah, I guess so. The 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 public art. Uh, piece in the, the plaza is going to be probably more significant, but it's also going to have potential for a lot of programming in that space. Um, the docks project, uh, the, the pile driving has, has been complete. Um, the contractor is now focused on the land side improvements, uh, which will all be completed um, between now and early January uh, when the access ramps will be delivered and installed. Um, the floating dock will be fabricated over the next few months and then will be floated down by barge uh, yeah, in May. Um, there's the, the uh, river crossing piece, which is supposed to be installed on the birthing dock. My guess is it's probably going to be around the time the birthing dock's installed, and that would probably be uh, late April. Um, the Heritage, Heritage Oaks Park ropes course uh, is underway and should be completed in January. Um, the balance of the site improvements, including an on-site on parking, a play area, seating, a concession stand, ticket office, restroom building, should be underway shortly pending weather conditions. Um, Memorial Park update. Uh, the park is looking fantastic, and if you haven't been by lately, you should try to drive by. Uh, the dugouts are nearly complete, and the contractor has poured the majority of the new concrete. There are a few more days of pouring concrete until the buildings come. Uh, the restroom, concession, picnic pavilion is due this month. Um, improvements into the play area have started, and inc including new shade canopy, as well as uh, play equipment enhancements. Ready? It's you. Sure. Um. <coughs> so uh, if there's no questions on any of those projects. Actually, I have no a question. Okay. So in the city projects that you described, the parks, Memorial Park, and then your Prop 68 grants. Did the Prop 68 grants include public art as the grant as part of the grant application? It's it's funded by the the, the program. Public art is definitely a feature. They view both um, active and passive recreation 
as having value, so they will cover art elements, but we did include them in all of our applications. And then because it's a city project, there should be a 1% set aside in the budget for public art as well. I believe so, but I'd have to check with Tracy. Okay. I'm just double today. Okay. Just checking. And because I haven't heard about a public art piece with Memorial Park. Uh, no, I, that, I don't know about the public art with Memorial Park. That, I'm just talking about the Prop the 68. Right, yeah. No, she also mentioned Memorial Park was coming right along, and then it occurred to me, I, di I didn't remember, that's a big city under city undertaking of, you know, of, a, of city buildings, and there should be a budget set aside for public art at that location. But it sounds like it's on a pretty aggressive timeline to get them ready, so... Just a question for Tracy. I'll ask if yeah. there's a public art element for Memorial Park, right? Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Or where the what, set aside went. It, it didn't it, go to the park. <laughs> or, and how much it is. I, I, I agree with you. I was under the impression there was that 1% for all public parks projects. Is there a difference between creating a park and renovating? And if it's an ADA recommendation, does that make a difference in how that verbiage is for the 1%? Know, you, they kind of leveled it and started over. Yeah. So it's like new. So that would seem to me like there should be, that 1% should be included in it. I'll follow Even if we don't use it for that park, there's not necessarily a requirement, although there is an assumption that, mm -hmm. that they'll, be, they'll be the yeah. set aside and it'll be used at that location like Joey Lopes. And it's right. aligned with our values and our mission. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll follow up with Tracy and get back to you. Great. Okay, and I would like to report some events that have happened since the commission. Oh, I'm sorry, Don. You Can had another up? question. Can I'm I sorry. Back up is kind of a follow up to what Aaron said and what Denise said. I did attend the uh, B Lakes opening, beginning, initiation, just getting started. They wanted to make sure we understood that that it was just the beginning, and they had four options of what they wanted to do on the park, and one did include art features. Uh, so they're going to come back in, yeah, they said the new year, probably January, to refine uh, the options that they proposed and uh, actually have a real... That, that's, a, um, yeah, that's a city uh, park, yes? Yeah, it will be. That, yeah, did yeah. It, that, that land was yeah. deeded to the city, you know, I believe? I, th I think so now. They, did, they spent a lot of time talking about, because um, it was a stakeholders meeting, so they talked a lot about the um, litter and the environmental destruction of bee lakes and how they had a lot of discussion about we should close down that part of the road to keep cars from throwing their oil in the water and things like that. Um, so the staff was going to work on that. But just to let you know that they did have the one initial meeting and then that process is, that process has started. Where is Bee's Lake? Well, if you go down South River Road, it's between the two marinas. Oh, okay. okay on the like, right. And if you look over yeah, on the right, okay. yeah. And the water in the lakes, you know, they're small, but mm -hmm. it goes up and down with the river. So right now there's water there. Lake uh, later might be in the, kind of an overstatement. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you go the there in the summer, soft. there's... <laughs> just I think, didn't sound I want, subtle. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a boat still in the water, so when the water level goes down, the boat is exposed a little bit, I think. But you can okay. see it there, right? So, all right, thank you. Okay, and I wanted to report on some events that have happened since the last time the commission met. Um, it's been a busy couple of months. Um, so in uh, November, uh, there was the wonderful Veterans Day Parade, and uh, we were very excited to have Mui Armstrong, our uh, department mascot, um, Mui uh, was able to attend the parade and ride along in the gator and see all the people in the community outside for that wonderful um, recognition of our nation's veterans. So um, it was a wonderful uh, parade and uh, that was a, a nice start to our November. Um, then on Thursday, November 14th, we had the active aging luncheon and this is kind of the big highlight of the year for our seniors. And it is a wonderful 
holiday kickoff luncheon and we spoil them and it is um, set up beautifully uh, decorated for fall we have Dickens type carolers that come and sing festive Christmas songs and uh, engage everybody in singing and this year uh, the the wonderful uh, Centennial Rotary Club here in West Sacramento helped sponsor that and by doing that it, it's Food costs a lot, we know that. We know um, throwing a nice, really nice meal for them. Um, and seniors aren't, they don't really have a lot of money to be paying for a, you know, a high-end meal like that. So our wonderful Centennial Rotary Club um, co-sponsored that and helped, helped put that on. Um, and there was a wonderful video out of the Dickens Carolers singing the whole 12 Days of Christmas with our seniors. And it's floating out there on... Uh, on social media if you get to see it. And this is kind of uh, fun to see how much this, this event means to our seniors. And they really um, value that holiday time together and that wonderful meal. So um, that was on November 14th. Uh, Christmas basket signups have been going on uh, at the community center and will uh, go until the 18th. Um, and the Christmas Basket Project um, has existed for over three decades, over 30 years in West Sacramento, and it's a wonderful group of people. And they come together, they get food for the holidays, and get it to, to families who need it. And uh, families are able to come to the community center, and sign-ups are held over there. Um, and then we do even have you know city employees who help deliver and get involved with that. So it's just a wonderful, wonderful program. And just under 700 families and individuals had signed up as of today. So really wonderful work in our community. Um, uh, River City High School Music Booster Tunes Day happened on December 3rd. Um, the River City High School Music Boosters held a free community concert, uh, giving Tunes Day. Um, and that happened here at the City Hall Galleria. Um, on Friday, December 6th, was the annual Community Tree Lighting and Winter Wonderland event. Um, and Again, that's just another amazing event in our community. Um, and this year, the whole team that was working on it with the chamber and all of the city departments, um, you know, the weather and all this rain, so just had to be prepared for, for whatever. And that team, headed by our own uh, commissioner uh, over here, Denise, um, they just did a great job. And, and I wanted to share with you really quickly um, a little video that was put together and it really gives you an idea what this is about and what this event means to our community. So just a wonderful event, really one of the, the biggest and brightest nights of our community for the year. So um, just uh, wanted to share that that happened, and it was amazing. And even with the weather and all of that, everybody came inside, and 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 it came off wonderful. So, quite a uh, crowd. Yeah, you know, quite a crowd. <laughs> Connie, could I interject? Of interest to this group, um, there were close to 300 kids that performed in the capacity of in the in a one music program or another. 
Um, Lighthouse Charter had over 190 kids up on the mezzanine. Um, we have a we have a marching band at uh, Southport and Westmore Oaks has a junior high school marching band. They participated, and the syncopated sea monkeys were here, and then the River City High School big band. So it was a night full of kids and music, and I think that was the highlight, really. Exciting. It wasn't th these kids. We should. We don't talk very much about the music program that we have in our community and how it adds to the educational process of kids in our community. And so that's kind of a mission of a chamber this year. We want to talk about that more. Maybe this group, if we're meeting more often, maybe we could talk about the music <laughs> aspect of the culture. I'm always ready. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Connie, I'm going to date you, but that, that ceremony's come a long way from the corner. <laughs> corner of Park and Jefferson. Oh yes. my gosh. I remember. And my gosh. West Capitol Stone. Avenue yes. and, wow. and where am I? And Jefferson right there. Yep. Yeah. And we turn on the lights and pray they went on. Uh huh. We, we still do that. Pray they go on. <laughs> yeah, I guess. With I guess. A, yes. Our, our yeah. heart rates are high but uh, Santa and the team managed to get them on so it's. I wonderful. remember crossing Jefferson at the you know right there at the gateway yeah. where that sign yeah. is is yeah. where that tree lighting was and people right. walking across that intersection oh my gosh right. Uh, right. terrifying well. we even had it one time in the parking lot near Labu when this street was torn up and they were um, oh, I remember. we had it without the tree <laughs> yeah so well and remember when the tree that was put here for the event was not the monstrous thing that it is now yes I think we might have the tallest Christmas holiday tree in in the region <laughs> living <laughs> living yeah. yes seriously yes. it's three stories tall yeah wow. and that was yeah. a specific request when they built this building yeah. put yeah. in the put Christmas in the tree, tree and put yeah. power out there so we yeah. can light it easily and then um with respect to the music the River City Band was at Southport School last week just marching and playing for the whole student body so it's nice to because you do that with sports high school yeah younger but now with the band doing it thought it was a nice touch and I think kids now, it and Denise is right that was a cool addition this year of those students and they um, were dressed festive in in you know their holiday outfits and they were lit their their instruments and themselves so they were all wrapped in lights uh, as they you know led Santa in so that was just a really cool addition and touch so um, and then as if there wasn't enough going on the very next weekend the community center uh, the uh, breakfast with Santa uh, just happened so uh, actually Denise maybe you can tell us a little bit about that so we call it no drama Santa um, <laughs> and because we have a hundred hundred fam uh, hundred family members come into to two seatings and kids get to come in at 8.30 and it, the space is all theirs until 10. Santa is there, there's photos. We have kids that have been coming um, since they were three and four. Now they're teenagers, they begrudgingly come but they still come, they're hearing <laughs> their parents. But um, it's a lovely event for kids. It's great for kids uh, with sensory challenges around big crowds and stress and big malls and lights and it you know creating an opportunity for every child to have that Santa moment for yeah so it, it's a it's a favored event yes a very great event so um, and let's see so uh, the next thing I need to remind you that we with all the holidays we do close from December 23rd until the 2nd of January um, so the community center and City Hall will be closed of course you know services will be going on in the city uh, and you know phones are are working and manned for anything urgent that comes up but we do have our, our holiday closure um, and let's see we were looking for some input from commissioners um, regarding your agenda packets whether any of you prefer to receive that electronically 
Okay, I got one nice hand, two, three, okay. <laughs> All right, Katie's looking and gonna note this down. Um, so there's basically two options. We can continue to mail you your uh, packet or if you prefer to receive it electronically and then we would have a hard copy here for you the night of the meeting so you can write all over it and make all your great notes and 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 keep track of whatever you need you know the hard copy so um katie did you get all those mm -hmm. okay katie, yeah. katie was able to get that great um and i think for us that is um oh i'm sorry i am missing the panto i need to tell you about oh, the you. black box right now it's not over yet it's holidays and we're been a busy couple months but uh, Little Women uh, it's a British panto so every year since the community center has opened um, we have a, a winter holiday panto and if you're not familiar with what a panto is it's a musical it's a comedy um, it's very light-hearted um, and uh, I think kind of Monty Python type thing um, however it, this is very family oriented and a lot of fun um, and so Little Women is our British panto this year um, it is uh, playing Wednesday through Friday this week December 18th uh, let me get my dates right 18th 19th 17th 18th 19th Wednesday through Friday 7 p.m. Um, and then on December 21st, Saturday, and Sunday, December 22nd, it is an afternoon 2 p.m. show. Um, and it, it's just a lot of fun. If you have never been to our uh, winter panto, it's a great thing to bring kids to. There's candy. Um, they incorporate throwing candy in the show, but it's very interactive and super fun. And um, you find yourself singing along or, or you know, engaging with the characters. And uh, it is completely family friendly and a great thing to grab the family and head out to see the, the panto. So, um, so that is going on. And I think with that, we, we don't have any other events that I can think of right now. On. Oh, do you want to? Yeah. So I just checked in with Tracy about the Memorial Park set aside. The 1% was set aside. Uh, she said there was just so much happening on site with Little League. You know, they had to install uh, concrete inlays and, and pavers in the walkways, and they thought that it would be uh, too much at that time to, to install a public art feature. So they elected instead to go ahead and put, um, to, to pay into the fund, um, and also had a really tight construction schedule. Mm -hmm. But so good. So the fund is growing. Yep. That's great. Glad to hear it. Thank you. Thank you for checking on that. The, the wonders, the modern wonders, right? She right. was able to text her the question and get, away. get the answer. <laughs> so. Thank you. Thank you, technology. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, technology. Um, so I, I, I think I'm done reporting what we have. I hope to maybe see some of you out at the Panto if you get a chance to come by and see that at the building. And then, of course, we all, our department, we just wish you a wonderful holiday season um, and a happy new year. And we're excited about the new year. And we will have a lot of great stuff to work on with our commission and our commissioners so that's what we have thank you Commissioner McMichael <coughs> Connie do you need anything for the Christmas baskets are you accepting donations or what do you need there are donation receptacles in the community center um, non-perishable food items can be brought over so think things like you know soups um, canned items non-perishable um, th those certainly will be uh, wonderful donations for families. So any food. They must be doing the, they must be doing the give the giveaway this weekend then, huh? Yes. Uh, the baskets are they are doing it this weekend. That's why everything ends. You sign up by the 18th, and then they're doing it all the 20th and the 21st. The pickups and the deliveries of the baskets. And last night uh, here were uh, kids giving back West Sacramento children. Mm -hmm with performances and also the children had an opportunity to personalize a, a greeting card to their recipients and there was some wonderful I was pretty busy but there was some wonderful art enclosed so that was very heartwarming and I want to bring another matter to this commission because the music in this community has been so exponentially growing over just a short number of years I'm wondering if this commission is empowered to perhaps recognize 
Felicia uh, Weatherly uh, Greenwood, who has single-handedly built, I, I think, I'm not sure, maybe you can enlighten me, but that, could enlighten you. That, that department growing from one music program, as I understand it, has spread out to uh, the, the uh, programs that you mentioned earlier, and perhaps some recognition of a musician uh, a commendation, something that we could do as a commission to uh, acknowledge that our teachers are making a huge difference in the arts in this community. Um, I would just like to say that all of our schools, our Washington Unified School District and our private and our charter schools have invested in arts education for our kids and it, this is so valuable. In a world where all we talk about are test scores, math and language arts, and when you tell someone what school your child goes to, the first thing they ask is, how are the test scores? We are fighting for the very humanity and soul of our kids right now and our future in keeping that art education alive in schools. So when I see a night that uh, the bands were performing here for Giving Tuesday, um, and that was the River City High School Big Band and the River City Regiment, and the Riverbank and Elkhorn, who have not had a flourishing band program in years, they were here as well, across the street, and that was under the direction of Rudy Cisneros. Mm -hmm. Across the street, um, Felicia Weatherly had her guitar student and her orchestra, and then the next night, the Sea Monkeys and her beginning strings. I mean, we have a lush music program, and the arts program is just as strong. So I just would like to thank all of our educators, all the people in suits who sit on top of the education chain, and the teachers who are in the classroom for making sure that our kids have those opportunities. This is what we need. This is what will make our future generation want to fight for these 1% bits and pieces to bring art back to our community. It's so valuable. You know, in fact, if we, when we got to the um, items for future agenda, I was going to request, would it be possible, and I know it's kind of blurring the lines, but I bet they would be delighted if we could have people, you know, Washington Unified folks in the music program come and just tell us what, just tell us what you're doing. So, and then we can talk about them, you know. I think it would be lovely to know. I didn't know that... Um, what was, what was the school that you Riverbank, said? Elkhorn Riverbank, Elkhorn, and now Elkhorn. has a band program. I had no idea. We I mean, this is, they haven't had a strong band program in a number of years. And I look at what our school district has invested uh, financially in salary and instruments when across the river they're cutting those programs and shutting down schools. Right. So, well, in grants through, play, you know, organizations like the West Sacramento Foundation, they've absolutely. given grants a couple of times. So it just would be... I think it's an important piece of our purview that, that we haven't had a, a chance to take a look at. I'd be really interested in knowing more about the, the music sure. program at Washington Unified, district-wide, mm -hmm. and I, Lighthouse Charter for that matter. And Lighthouse Charter. Yeah. And Our Lady of Grace and, uh -huh. and, and, and um, the preschools who are starting on that path. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's important for us to look at that and remember that and invest in that. It's not just kids playing. They are learning, and we're... Um, and they're using both sides of their brain. Yes, they are. <laughs> and we're teaching them to value that things should be beautiful in their world. Yes. I just want to add that I, as a, a mother of a seven-year-old who goes to Riverbank, that, you know, she... Um, I have a seven-year-old who has a hard time expressing herself sometimes, but she really does shine through their VAPA program. I forget what it stands for at the moment, but it's one of her favorite things and one of the things that she looks forward to every week. And that program has really um, taken off since she started kindergarten there. And it really I'm has. just really proud to, to mm -hmm. see it there. And I hope and I will do whatever it takes to um, get it to stay. We have to, to fight it. with that. We have to yeah. fight for that with our votes and tax dollars. I mean, on, the, on the same line, there's another level here, too, because schools on Wednesday get out at 1.30. So if you're a parent... You have to take off work, pick them up, or make some other arrangements. So the PTO level, in particular at Southport, they have after-school classes, arts, mm -hmm. you know, uh, tennis, Spanish. Uh, they started yoga. They have a gardening class, all funded by the PTO, to fill up that gap on Wednesday afternoons. Mm -hmm. So there's another level. you got the schools. you got the teachers. you got the charters. 
you know, in the VAPA program, and then you have parents trying to get something done in the same. Well, I program. was really surprised when I talked to Mr. Cisneros after the tree lighting, and he told me that the River City High School Big Band, they, they don't have a class for that. So these kids are come. that's not a, they don't get credit for it, they don't have a class for it. They come in on their, early in the morning, I guess. My son is in that class, and so he gets a V at 7 a.m., and an 18-year-old man gets up that early just to play jazz in the morning. Mm -hmm. No school credit. Yeah, it's pretty, mm -hmm. it's, it, it's a story that we need to, we, we could all do a better job telling. I think. Absolutely. Um, any other comments? Because I have a short list of things I just wanted to bring up, if that's OK. Any other? No, and I'm just understanding we want a oh. presentation of Washington Unified's music programs, and we will reach out to That'd the district, and, and that will be one of the and items. That, you know, that could be, it sounds like it could be three different meetings, mm -hmm. you know, elementary and, and middle school and then high school. I will also say that there's dance, and I know at River City High School, dance is considered uh, a PE elective, but if you've never been to their dance show, it it's is really good. phenomenal. It is. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to commend the city on the YouTube page and keeping that up. That's such a great way to keep up with what's going on with parks and arts, so thank you for managing that. Um, I was hoping the high school self-portrait show at the Crocker Art Gallery, last year a River City High School student um, was one of the award winners. We've got West Sacramento kids who attend Christian Brothers, St. Francis, um, Jesuit, and River City High School who enter pieces into the high school self-portrait show at the Crocker. And another nonprofit I work with is a sponsor of that, which is how I know. And their reception is Sunday, May 17th, the future. But I was wondering if it's possible to um, note June 29th that maybe I could put you in contact with our West Sacramento students who submit their pieces. Maybe they can come and just show the pieces that, that they had in that show. If that would that, be great. That would be okay. Yeah, get us the information. Yes. Okay, I'll do that. And then lastly, I don't know how we go about this, but this is the second year that the uh, River City High School Music Boosters have taken on the burden of planning the Veterans Day Parade. And, and they love doing it. I know as a band mom, it's an opportunity to have the marching band play in, in town. How can we get to a place where there is some sort of MOU that the city will um, grant the permits and waive the hard costs as long as the nonprofit community is willing to come in and do the heavy lifting to get that parade off the ground. Say that other, heavy lifting. Heavy lifting, planning and coordinating the parade. Because if we can't necessarily depend on city staff to plan a parade, but it takes some city staffing, um, police yes. and parks and permits, and I know the nonprofit community would come together to make that happen. If we knew that that was in place every year, we will have a Veterans Day parade. The city will waive fees to make it happen as That's long as the work is done. That's probably a parks a parks question, right? Parks commission. Parks commission question. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bring it here. So I should bring up to a parks commission meeting for that. We just need to have that as part of how we do business. I would, if I may. Bring it here first mm -hmm. and have this That's commission true. take action. And if staff deems it appropriate to go to parks, go ahead. So I know okay. yeah. in, the, in the old days, they couldn't waive fees. The city right. could not yeah. waive fees. But, yeah. but they could sponsor. They, or but they could appropriate the money to cover the cost, Okay. okay. which might Comes impact budget the budget in some there. fashion. But they couldn't waive the fees. I think. It's a good idea. I think we should bring it here. Maybe first. that's what I'm asking is a line item in the yeah. budget to cover the fees mm -hmm. so that we can have a parade in West Sacramento. And what better uh, time and um, honoree than our veterans? Well, and I know from our group, we were asking questions. Are they going to do it? Are they not going to do it? Should we call them? Who do we talk to? So you're right. If it's an every year thing, those questions are all answered, mm -hmm. and we know where to go, and we know how to get involved. So, I okay, and this also sounds like something. I mean, obviously, I need to run by our director, and okay. and we can continue discussing it as you know staff and 
and see what the appropriate direction to go forward would be. So. Um, uh, thank you for that. I would also like to extend some kudos to everyone across the street. Well, everyone at Parks and the Community Center. Uh, Sam Brinkheis, I watched him running into Home Depot looking for more lights for that tree. Gosh, that guy's yeah. all over town. He works so hard. Your whole team works so hard. The Black Box Theater, I was there for the um, Dolores Huerta Friendsgiving event. Mm -hmm. uh, that was just a beautiful event. And for all who can see or hear me in the TV land, that black box theater is such a wonderful place sure. for an event. They had fantastic AV. Um, it was, and then to be, you know, in the same room as like a living legend. It's like meeting Wonder Woman or something to stand next to Dolores Huerta. Uh, so anyway, what a great space that is. And everyone should be utilizing that space for their meetings and events. Thank you. Thank you okay. for sharing that. And and we do have a lot of events and meetings going on. I mean, obviously, by mm -hmm. what you've just quoted. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's an amazing place. And our, our staff have so much heart. Oh, they're, they're so proud to be a part of this community and work hard for this community. And um, they're amazing people to work with. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've rambled on enough. Anything else from our commissioners? Just, okay. um, thank you to the... Um, Hi. Hi. I know <laughs> these chairs are so low. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you to the folks that staff this commission and yes. your willingness to extend our ability um, to meet more often and to have an impact in the arts. Um, that's that's time you're here. And so thank you very much for that. Thank you for your good job of getting those minutes out. I mean, it's the holidays. Who knows what happened this time? But you. Everyone does a great job, and it's, it really makes what we do a lot easier. And then um, for a future agenda item, it would be interesting to touch bases with. Um, I'd like it'd be interesting to hear from the Art Guild mm -hmm. and to see where they are and how they're doing and what's going on with them. And the um, I lost it. The gallery. I was going to. I was going to ask about upcoming shows. The gallery. Yes, we will make sure uh, to, at the um, beginning of the year, come in and kind of give you a report and then let you know what shows are coming in at our February meeting and, the and get you up to date with everything. Because yes. the Historical Society's yes. installation should be changing in, is it March that it changes? But just again. It'll, it'll change in May, June. In May, June. The, okay. one, the one that recycled mm -hmm. around, yeah. It's but still right in there. Mm -hmm. We've been invited to, we've been invited to be with our exhibit that we have going on right now, we've been invited to be part of a digital uh, huh? memorial quilts across the river. So there's information Wonderful. to come with that. And then, you know, having West Sacramento LGBTQ history recognized in that. So Wonderful. We're That's pretty wonderful. excited. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It'd That's be great right. to have an update from the Historical Society. Absolutely. Um, you know, how, like, like the real grassroots update. Yeah. How's funding? How's people? Where you, you know, what are your plans? Those kinds of things from mm -hmm. those two really anchor nonprofits in the arts in this community. It's a and wonderful example. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> it's a lot not of work. easy. So interesting. We just had our holiday um, celebration dinner yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. And we watched a 1928 movie that was partly filmed here and in Freeport. And it was great. It was fantastic. And it was my first silent movie ever. It was, I'll remember the name. I'll send it to you guys. But it That'd was great. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah, we could have, I could have the vice president show up. Because you have a fundraiser coming up, too. Well, that uh -huh. would be next year. March will be Drag Queen Bingo across the river. So I'll remind everybody about that one. That's I'll be fun. there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess, um, I, happy holidays to all of staff, city staff, and parks, and um, staff and I would look oh, for and, and, all, and all of us as well <laughs> um, so I would look for a motion to end this meeting yes so moved second second all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. thank you